surviving summer camp waiting so much waiting in summer camp lining up and waiting to go to another spot another site for the bus on a trip it is the most repeated request that we make of the children in our program and when we do it we want them to be quiet we want them to stand still and we want them to keep their hands to themselves right so let's talk about why they can't do it you may have heard this before it'll always be the answer it's science the brain takes 24 years to completely mature the frontal lobe is what's responsible for impulse control it's the last thing to fully develop so being quiet in line keeping your hands to yourself in line sitting still are things that are very 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 difficult for children to do some can do it and here's the thing sometimes they can do it like some kids can do it which immediately leads us to believe that they are making a choice and that everybody can make the same choice and that's where we go wrong because some kids can't do it so let's not expect any of them to and no one will suffer our high expectations right because the kids suffer and it makes things pretty miserable for us too so why can't they do it besides just their brain development the willingness to do the things that we want them to do comes from relationships the willingness to behave comes from the quality of the relationship children don't feel safe and loved with caregivers that yell and punish and threaten you cannot have a relationship with someone that doesn't make you feel safe and cared for so right now take a moment and make a decision what kind of experience do you want them to have this summer because they spend all year being constricted and restricted in school and in our programs too, right? Trying to get them to sit in front of a computer. They've been punished. They've got behavior charts. There's homework, so much uncertainty. I think we can easily agree that summer break should be fun and that kids deserve to feel at ease nobody gets to feel at ease when they're getting yelled at or forced into more restriction and obedience right i know we can probably also agree that we would all love summer camp to feel easy breezy but it's our job and it's not a job for them so it's our job to make sure that they have a fun summer in our care so instead of figuring out how we can make them be quiet and be still and sit quietly in this line and keep your hands to yourself, we need to figure out how to keep them entertained and how to adjust our expectations. Because remember that make me, that make them be quiet, that make me, make them leads to a power struggle. And that's what we are trying to avoid at all costs because no matter who wins, power struggle is a bad situation. It always feels bad. So really, even if one person gets their way, nobody wins. Everybody feels bad. So this will always be the answer. First, we manage ourselves. The kids in our groups are not in charge of us, and they certainly are not in charge of our emotions. Q-tip, quit taking it personally. We remember that scientifically, three deep breaths shuts down that fight or flight response and brings your cortisol level down. So when a big eruption happens in your group, maybe someone tries to run off, maybe there's a physical fight and, and you feel that big rush of adrenaline, right? Maybe someone has said something that makes you feel disrespected and you feel it. You need to remember that you are the only one in charge of you and you're gonna take a few deep breaths bring that cortisol level down shut down that fight or flight response and move on because if we can't stay in our higher developed brain states we can't expect them to stay in theirs think about that if we as grown-ups with fully developed brains cannot stay in our higher brain states all the time why are we expecting children 
to stay in theirs. We have to leave a little room for them to be grumpy, for them to be upset, for them to not know how to handle situations. It's literally what we're here for, right? Appropriate expectations. If we expect them to do something that they can't, then we're setting them up for failure and we're setting ourselves up for frustration. We are the ones in charge. So after we calm ourselves down and remember that this is not personal, we're going to keep their brain organized and in its higher state. We're going to remember the willingness to cooperate comes from the relationship. We're going to adjust our expectations. When they're waiting, we're going to provide focus or freedom. So providing focus is giving them something to focus on or do. Chants, callbacks, card games, hand clap games, or maybe I don't want to provide them something to focus, then I need to give them the freedom to talk. And then clear direction. What are their choices while they're waiting and how loud is too loud? Because look, the number one thing that I have ever heard school age staff raise their voice and yell at campers is waiting. The expectation that they stand in a straight line, keep their hands to themselves and don't say a word is first not an appropriate expectation but also when we do that when we put that expectation on them that's when trouble happens right we give them an unrealistic expectation they don't meet it and then we cannot control ourselves and that leads to a counselor yelling at their group right so clear direction on exactly what they are able to do. And look, if you choose to do none of this, you choose to not provide um, clear direction, to not provide something to do, to not give them some guidelines about talking or how loud they're allowed to be, that's okay. It's okay. But if a fight breaks out, if someone's hands aren't to themselves, if things get crazy and out of control, you also have to be okay with that, right? If you're not going to provide them something to do and some clear direction on what the boundaries are, you have to be okay with them going crazy because you did it, right? That was your choice. And if that's the way it's going to be in your group, that's cool. As long as we're not yelling at kids um, because of a situation that we've set up, then I think everybody can agree we're all good. I also feel like everybody can probably agree that that's not really what we want to happen, right? So what can you add to the fire? Water or gasoline? Water is clear direction and telling them what you want them to do. Gasoline is sitting them on a wall with nothing and then losing it when they move and then making them sit longer. It's just like the school teachers punishing kids who move too much with taking recess time out, right? They don't have impulse control. We want them to, but wanting them to have impulse control is not enough power to make them have it, okay? So the question is this. Are you willing to adjust your expectations? Can you provide a safe summer camp experience or is it going to be a power struggle for obedience and compliance? That's a decision that you have right now. You're going to decide focus or freedom. Decide what you're going to use and plan it out now so that you can introduce it on the very first day of camp. So look over lists of callbacks, look over chants, decide what are you going to do when you're standing in line because on the very first day, the very first time you guys are together, you are going to introduce this to your group and say, when we're waiting, we're going to do some callbacks. Let's practice them. And then you'll teach it to them. Maybe you have older kids, uh, maybe you have kids that are great readers and you can make them copy of the callbacks and you guys can vote on what are your top five to use in the beginning of summer. Maybe you make up a chant that is exclusive to your group that you do together. 
Maybe you sit your group down and say, does anybody know any hand clap games? Let them get up and teach the entire group. And then you can say, when you're in line, you can get a partner and do a hand clap game or you can talk, right? Or freedom to talk while they're waiting. You're just gonna give them some boundaries and we're gonna talk about that next. So the clear direction is what activity can they do or not do? So I just suggested four different things they can do in line. You don't always have to give four different choices, right? You can choose, maybe it's one thing, you may do a hand clap game. Maybe we're going to be waiting for a while, we don't know when the bus is coming, so I'm going to get some cards out, right? Give them clear direction. Let them know what their choices are. Now, maybe you're gonna choose two different things and that's how it's gonna be all summer long, all summer long. You'll still wanna remind them, but if you're gonna switch it up, which I recommend, right? Because everybody gets bored eventually, then you are going to provide them a reminder of the two choices they have every time we are waiting in line. So here's a great example of clear direction. Groups being loud is a huge trigger for staff, okay? And you know what? It's a trigger as old as me. I remember having one of those light meters in my cafeteria in elementary school, and that was like 100 years ago. Um, you know, but we're allowed to yell, right? We think we're allowed to scream on the playground. We're allowed to yell across the room instead of walking over to a kid. We're allowed to scream at them when they're being too loud, right? Like, can you imagine as a grown up being at like a hockey game and you're in line, you know, for a pretzel or, a, you know, maybe it's a concert or something and you're in line for a drink and everybody's excited and everybody's having a good time and everybody's talking, you're talking to each other and then someone comes down the hall and completely spazzes out because you're being too loud. Like, can you even imagine? So the reason I ask you to imagine that is this. You are working at a summer camp program, a school age program, a child care program. The buildings and spaces that we use are for child care. Nobody is expecting you to be quiet. So why are you expecting your kids to be quiet? They're children. We all know their children. I have an office in the YMCA. I know that if I want to record something, I wait till very specific times when the kids are out of the, the space where I'm at because it's a space for them. I would never expect them to be quiet for my own convenience. So there are gonna be times, right, where we are walking past offices or even, you know, maybe you're working our summer camp but you work in an elementary school. And so walking down the hall, you do need to be quiet because someone might be taking a test. Maybe you're walking by preschool rooms and it's nap time. Right, so there are definitely times that you need them to be quieter. But here's the deal, we need to be really clear with what quiet means because it means something different to different people. It means something different to different people. So we use one, two, three. Literally print out cards, laminate them, put them on your lanyard, put them with your child cards. Um, if you're using an iPad instead of cards this year, take screenshots of the numbers so that you can pull them up on your pictures and hold them up because on the very first day of camp, here's what you're going to teach your group. A one is like your baby brother is sleeping and you don't want to wake him up. Two is like we're at lunch and we're talking to each other at the table a three is yelling on the playground because we're having fun. So anything above a playground yell is like, I'm in trouble or I am on a roller coaster. So if you don't need help, then three is the loudest that we go when we're here at summer camp, right? So I teach that to them. I literally give them a visual cue, the one, two, three, and then I model 
telling them exactly what my one is, what my two is. It's a very clear expectation. So now I'm taking my group through the hallway and we're going to pass some preschool rooms who are napping. So I'm going to say, hey guys, we are going to walk through the hallway. Preschool is sleeping, so we need to be at a one. And I'm going to hold up that one card. Hey, we are heading to the pool. A two is the loudest that we can be in the pool because louder than that means that you need help in the pool. So it's going to be a two, a two in the pool. Let's say I'm on the playground and they're allowed to be at a three, but they're like real loud. Or maybe I'm just playing in a spot, in a building or in the gym where it's perfectly appropriate for them to be screaming, but it's a little too loud. Like they're screaming so loud that um, I can't even hear someone standing in front of me asking for help. So I'm going to say, hey, we need to bring it down to a three as I hold up my three card. Now, let me be clear. This is not me screaming at the top of my lungs for them to be quieter. This is me going group to group and saying, hey guys, we need to bring it down to a three. And maybe I model with my voice. We need to bring it down to a three. This is as loud as you can be when we're playing in here, right? Same as if I was in a classroom and everybody was playing games at a table and I wanted it to be at a two. I would go table to table and say, hey, remember, we're at a two right now, okay? We're at a two. So take a moment to plan out what you're going to do while you're waiting so that you can teach them on the very first day of camp. So you're going to pick, are you going to do hand claps to start the year or um, are you going to make up a chant with your group? Are you going to let them vote and choose? Plan it out right now because if you walk away from here um, thinking, oh, okay, yeah, mm, that's a great idea, and you just keep moving, the chances of you actually being ready to present this to your campers on the first day is very slim, right? So take some time right now to plan out what you're going to do while you're waiting so you can teach them right from the get-go. And then remember, you know, two weeks into camp, when you get a new camper um, added to your group, that you teach them the routines or you choose another child in your group and make them a helper so that they can um, so that they can teach the new kids too. Good luck.